At Rescue Education, we have the best explanation every time. I'm Dr. B, and I'm going to help you easily and rapidly learn organic chemistry. If you like this video, you'll love my self-help books. Learn more about them at rescueedu.com. Our next topic in stereochemistry is optical activity and racemic mixtures. First, we'll discuss the measurement and sources of optical activity. As we talked about in section 5.1, enantiomers have identical physical properties, except that they rotate plane polarized light in equal but opposite directions. Optical activity is the ability of a molecule to rotate plane polarized light. What is plane polarized light? It's produced when you pass ordinary light through a polarizing filter. Ordinary light has electromagnetic waves propagating in all directions. When you use a polarizer, only one coherent direction of light is allowed through. In this case, only vertical light waves are allowed. If you have two polarizing filters which are exactly aligned, then all of the coherent light is let through the area where they overlap. If the two polarizing filters are exactly perpendicular, then the light comes through the first filter, but is not allowed through the second filter, and no light comes through where they overlap. This area is dark. The device used to measure optical activity is called a polarimeter. It has a sample tube between two polarizers. The first polarizer takes the light from the source and makes it coherent. The second polarizer is used to detect any optical rotation caused by the molecules in the sample tube. We always start with the two polarizers aligned. Let's look at two possible scenarios. In the first, there is nothing in the sample tube which can cause optical rotation. The light that comes through the first polarizer is not rotated, and so all of it comes through the second polarizer, which is aligned with the first. The observer sees full light. We'll talk about the exact causes of optical inactivity next. In the second scenario, there is a molecule in the sample tube which causes optical rotation. We say the sample is optically active. If the second polarizer remains aligned with the first, then the observer sees gray. Gray is between full light and full dark. We can then rotate the second polarizer to get all the light back. In this example, we need to rotate the second polarizer 60 degrees in the positive direction. This value is called the observed optical rotation. Now let's discuss the actual causes of optical inactivity and activity. There are two causes of optical activity. The first is a sample tube containing a pure enantiomer. If we have a sample of pure R2-bromobutane, we will get an optical rotation of minus 23.1 degrees. And if we have a pure sample of the S enantiomer, we would get an optical rotation of plus 23.1 degrees. Notice that all other physical properties of the two enantiomers, such as the boiling point, would be exactly identical. The other scenario is that you have a mixture of both enantiomers, but the sample is enriched in one of the enantiomers. We could, for example, have 75% minus R enantiomer, and 25% of the plus S enantiomer. We say the sample has an enantiomeric excess, EE for short, of 50% of the minus R enantiomer. And we would expect a net rotation in the negative direction. We could calculate the exact magnitude of the expected rotation of this mixture, but we won't do it here. The first cause of optical inactivity is an achiral molecule which has no ability to rotate plane polarized light. 
This is very common. The second cause is if you have an exactly 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. This is called a racemic mixture or a racemate. This is also a common situation and we'll discuss why it occurs in the last section. If you have a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers, then every time one molecule of an enantiomer rotates the plane polarized light in one direction, a molecule of the opposite enantiomer will rotate it in exactly the opposite direction. The two rotations cancel out and there is no net rotation. Usually when you see a chiral compound, it exists as a racemic mixture unless you are told otherwise. If you need to stress you have a racemic mixture, then you say it is plus minus, RS, or you can use the prefix RAS. When you do an actual measurement on a polarimeter, you get an observed optical rotation. The observed optical rotation is never reported because it depends on the concentration of the sample and the length of the sample tube. Obviously, the more concentrated the sample, the more rotation you would expect. This is because the light will encounter more molecules and be rotated more. Instead, we need to calculate a standardized value called the specific rotation. This is the value reported in scientific papers and reference tables. The symbol for this is an alpha in square brackets. We divide the observed rotation, that is the value obtained directly from the polarimeter, by the concentration in grams per milliliter, and also by the length of the sample tube in decimeters. Most sample tubes are one decimeter long. Pause and do this sample problem. A sample of pure S2-methyl 1-butanol has an observed rotation of minus 11.6 degrees. The sample tube is one decimeter long and the concentration of the sample is two grams per milliliter. What is the specific rotation of this molecule? The equation for specific rotation is the observed rotation divided by both the concentration of the sample in grams per mil and the sample tube length in decimeters. This sample has an observed rotation of minus 11.6 degrees, which is divided by 2 grams per milliliter and also divided by 1 decimeter sample tube length. The specific rotation is minus 5.8 degrees. Again, this is the standardized value you would report in the scientific literature. Don't worry about reconciling the units. The final value is always reported in simple degrees. A very important point to make is that it's virtually impossible to predict whether a particular molecule will be the R or S enantiomer if all you know is its direction of optical rotation, either plus or minus. In other words, R, S and plus minus are pretty much unrelated. The two molecules below are quite similar in structure, except one has a hydroxyl and the other a bromide. They are both R, but the first has a positive rotation and the second has a negative rotation. But if you definitely know that one enantiomer is the R minus enantiomer, then you know the other must be the S plus enantiomer. Enantiomers must have both opposite RS designations and opposite direction of optical rotations. Next, we need to talk about the issue of chirality in chemical reactions and the origin of racemic mixtures. Many chemical reactions yield chiral products, but in most cases you get the racemate, that is, you get the 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. Let's look at a very important reaction we'll learn soon 
and why it produces aracimate. When you react HBr with butene, you get 2-bromobutane, which is a chiral molecule. In fact, you get the racemic mixture. This is understood to be the case, and we don't show the stereochemistry of this product because we get both enantiomers equally. Why do we get the racemate? We need to look at the mechanism of the reaction, that is, how the reaction occurs. The chirality center is made in the second step of the reaction. A carbocation is attacked by bromide. It can be attacked from the left or the right equally as well, so there is an equal chance of getting both the R and the S enantiomer. There is nothing in the mechanism or the carbocation that can bias the reaction towards one enantiomer or the other. In fact, the rule is that a reaction of achiral reagents to give a chiral product must always generate the racemate. Here, both HBr and butene are achiral, so they must yield the racemate. There are other reactions which can produce one enantiomeric product, but it depends on the starting material and the mechanism of the reaction. This reaction is called an SN2 reaction, and we study it in topic 7.1. Don't worry about it right now. If we start with the pure S enantiomer of the starting molecule, then we get only the R enantiomer of the product. This is because the mechanism of the reaction always requires that the hydroxide come in from the backside and we invert the stereochemistry. Note that we usually draw the stereochemistry of both the starting material and the product to show this relationship. So one enantiomer of a chiral starting material can sometimes produce one enantiomer of the product. It depends on the starting material and the mechanism. If you're using my book, I encourage you to do the extra test your knowledge problems for this topic so you can be sure you really understand it. All the answers are at the back. This video is closely based on my first semester organic chemistry self-help book. My self-help books are particularly valuable in difficult learning situations, but you can also use them to get an edge or to get a head start. If you want to learn more about my books and videos, how to get the books, or my future projects, go to rescueedu.com.